Hello, I'm Dr. Yuling Li, an education professor, and in this video we'll discuss five research-based strategies for effective learning. These strategies are from the realm of education psychology, and links to the actual research articles are included in the video description. A research-based strategy for effective learning is called spaced practice. In this article, Sapita and colleagues had students learn obscure facts such as what European nation enjoys the most spicy Mexican food. Then, they separated the students into groups, each with a different gap before their next review session and a different period before their final test. Researchers compared the final exam scores to find the best time between study sessions. The red ridge line represents ideal final test performances employing space practice. For example, if you are taking a test five days later, it's best to do a review after three days. Or say you have an exam in 10 days, you should do a review on the eighth day. The key results are, cramming your study session is less effective than space practice, with other studies showing a 10 to 30% improvement in final test results. Second, the best time between reviews depends on how long you want to recall the subject. The farther the test, the longer the time between review sessions. The concept of interleaving is a valuable way to improve your learning. Interleaving means that you have to switch between different types of problems or different types of topics. This is compared to blocking, which covers one topic exclusively at a time. Rohr and Taylor looked at what happened when students worked on the same kind of math problems for the whole study session versus when they had to answer different kinds of problems. The students who did blocking might have done better on their mock tests straight after their study session, but they didn't learn it as deeply. But one week after reviewing, students who answered different types of problems got an average of 63%, while those who answered the same type of problem, blocking, got an average of 20%. So for long-term retention, interleaving is far better. Elaboration interrogation is an effective learning strategy. This is when you ask yourself how and why things operate and then answer them. By asking questions, you are encouraged to articulate the important ideas. And by providing additional information, you build links between what you know and what you're learning, making it simpler to remember. If you're studying the anatomy of the foot, for instance, you can ask, what bones do I see? What are the related biological systems? Why are fractures possible? What causes sprains? The crucial point is that the questions describe and clarify the main ideas and make links between them. According to Wollenshin and Stockley, elaborative interrogation can be done alone or in groups and the quality of elaborative questioning matters. Students did best when they answer the questions well. However, an inadequate response was still better than no response. Dual coding is a useful research-based learning approach. Do you believe studying using only words or only images, words plus images or both would improve learning? While Mayer and colleagues investigated this problem and found that studying with words and images together was found to lead to better learning. This is the dual coding theory. A warning though, when the students had to verbally recall ideas from their study session, dual coding is not as helpful. The impact of dual coding is when students had to use what they had learned to solve different problems and answer different kinds of questions. A good way to start using dual coding is to think about what words you could write to describe the picture or what picture show the main idea of the text. The key to doing this is to know what kinds of pictures might go best with each subject or topic. And the more the text and picture match up, the more likely it is that it will help you learn more. A research-based strategy for effective learning is called retrieval practice. Also known as a testing effect, this is a way to bring information from long-term memory back to mind. This is where you can do a short quiz at the end of a study session, or even use flashcards to test yourself. Rodiger and Karpicki looked at how well retrieval practice worked compared to just reading and rereading important passages. If the final test was in two to seven days, students who did one reading session and then a retrieval practice session did at least 30% better than those who did two reading sessions only. Most students thought that rereading was more helpful than retrieval practice, but students who mostly did retrieval practice remember over 50% more than those who didn't. The longer you need to remember something, the more important retrieval practice is. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.